I've got a job here which, in hindsight, I, yeah, I should have said, no, I can't do it. Um, this is a, a roller, feed roller or something for a um, paper bag machine or something. Yeah. But I think what they're doing is they're adapting a machine to do different things and taking a part out of one machine and trying to put it in another one. And what they wanted was to have this shaft here and there's another one up the other end as well. Um, turned down from inch and a half to inch and a quarter. And at first I thought, well, it's too long, it won't even go on the machine. But as you can see, it is in the machine. It's a bit close to the limit on this lathe. And in order to get the tool, far enough along this way, I've had to flip the compound slide around. Partly because this machine having a uh, the Angus quick threading attachment on it, it looks to me, I've never considered it before, but it looks to me that this this unit here has pushed things along a little way so we've lost a bit of travel here oh no not there you'd think this would go right to the end of the bed um, the aim just has pushed the control lever further along and that now is what restricts the movement of the carriage along the along the bed of the machine and you can see there's still a bit of bit of space here um, but anyway it is what it is and that has restricted the distance that we can move the carriage along and as I say I've had to move this around so that has been a bit of a, a bit of a pain but it's all doable um, the main problem with it though is the length of this piece. I've got this bit here down to within a couple of thou of one and a quarter inches. But as we move along further away from the from the centre supporting the end, we've got some flexibility in this shaft, even though this looks like it's quite chunky here. It will move. So a bit of a push up and down and we're getting a few thou movement on the indicator and that is enough for chatter to kick in. And as we're taking metal off it, it becomes more flexible. So we're starting to get a lot of vibration and vibration causing chatter and it's just been an absolute nightmare. Let's take a little spring cut off here. Tiny, and then we'll get into cutting some fresh metal, but we're going pretty slow, slow feed, sharp tool, really meant for aluminium. But an efficient cut. And see how far we get. Just touched on. Twenty thou on the diameter, so we've got ten thou cut. See how it lights it.
try and take a proper cut. You could hear the vibration going on, I don't know if we can see that, let's try and get the camera into a position where we can see that better. Is that any better, Will that light, back light off? That was cutting, but it's just horrible. So I wonder if we can clean that up with a 5,000 skim across this piece. Just turned the handle the wrong way, but you could hear. That is not having it. Once the thing starts chattering, it's so hard to get rid of it, even at the tiniest depths of cut, it just follows the existing vibration, and if anything, it just gets worse. I've thought in the past that I could do the steady for this machine. I've had it for 20 plus years and it didn't come with one. Occasionally you get a job and think, oh, <laughs> or you get, get asked to do a job and you can't do it because you know you need a steady and we haven't got one. So we've got this thing in here, this job in this lathe. And I'm thinking, I really need a steady to support this shaft in the middle. Let's have a quick Google see if there's anything out there and lo and behold there's one for sale on eBay and it's also not far from here a few miles away and I had a look at the picture I compared it to the drawing in the parts manual looked to be just the thing so yep yeah, I went and bolt it and this is it um, quite a nice one with the roll of followers. There was another one on eBay which had the brass pads here. It was also a lot further away. Although it was cheaper. And this, this thing was not, this was quite a bit of money. But I thought, you know what, it's about time I got one of these. And there's the drawing in the parts manual. So all set to do this job properly. Ha! Huh.
Hmm. That ain't right. Well, as you can see, that is sitting way too low. There's hardly any gap here. Huge gap at the bottom. And it's barely touching the carriageway here. You see it better on that side? Yeah, there. Um, clearly, this is not made for this lathe. <laughs> Oh, Ollocks. Well, I bought the damn thing now. I've got to, uh, I've got to make it work. So, we need a spacer. I've had a measure, and this is basically an inch too short centre height. This needs, this needs to be an inch higher. So, an inch plate is needed underneath here. And it's got a bit of an awkward job because we're going to have um, we're going to have to have a slot for the V there on the bottom of the plate. We're going to have a raised bit on the top to fit into the steady. We've got to have something that's going to fit in here. Oh, and we're going to have to make a new clamping plate as well, which is also a bit of a giveaway that this is just not the right one for this, because it just doesn't come anywhere near clamping up. It's just plain wrong. Um, yeah. Just no good. So... Yeah, find some find some suitable steel. So the nearest thing I can find is this horrible lump of rustiness. I think it might even have been flame cut from a big plate. 25mm thick. By the time we've cleaned this top and bottom faces up, it won't be 25mm. But if it's seven eighths, say that will probably work, and I'll be able to just put a piece of packing um, underneath on this side. Same fashion as the way that the bottom of this steady has been done, so that there's a bit of a pad on this side. Maybe a one eighth step. Where it goes along, and then the cut away for the V. Ah, oh, okay. Right, I've just started kind of straightening out this uh, crappy piece of steel, and I've realised that I don't need it to be this wide. In fact, I only really want it to be as wide as the the steady itself, which is about two and a quarter inches. This is about three and a quarter inches. So it's about an inch too wide. I could offset the hole in the middle, but this has already got a hole in the middle. So not only would I need to trim the, the width as well as the length, and then I've still got to face top and bottom because it's well a bit of hot rolled plate and it's not flat um, I think I'm gonna switch to plan B which is to make the, uh, the little riser block out of aluminium I've got some two inch by one inch flat bar. Not quite as wide as the uh, as the steady, but not far out. This is going to be straight enough as it comes. So I just need to cut it to length and put some V's in it. 
it'll be a lot quicker to use this than to carry on working with that horrible lump of steel. Whether aluminium is good enough? Hmm. Don't know. We shall see. Right, this is my adapter. Just a packing piece, really, for the fixed steady. And it was a little bit more of a fiddly process in making it um, because the V ways on the Colchester bed are 80 degrees. So this slot that I machined in here, this V slot, I've done that 80 degrees. And I've got kind of a keyway here um, to adapt this to the packing piece. And that top piece is also 80 degrees. So I've nodded the head of the, the mill down five degrees to do to do two sides on that kind of keyway. So just tilted this down, run across it, flipped it round 90 degrees and run across the other one. So that sorted that out. And then to cut the 80 degree V slot in the adapter block, I had I had the head tilted over that way um, at 33 degrees because I found this cutter which made up the other seven to give me 40 degrees on each side so 40 degree that way 40 degree that way so yeah all, all in all a bit of faffing around but yeah, it's done and it's looking good. We've just got to uh, see if it does the job. That's a bit more like it.